Video 7, Selective Provider Tunnels. This video describes the task number 7 of this introduction to multicast VPNs. There is a classic conflict in all the multicast technologies. You must choose between signaling efficiency and data bandwidth efficiency. Inclusive tunnels are very efficient in terms of signaling, but not in terms of data bandwidth. If one single downstream PE requests a multicast flow, then this flow is sent to all the PEs in the MVPN, even to those with no receivers for that particular flow. As an alternative to inclusive tunnels, selective tunnels provide optimal data transport. With selective tunnels, the C multicast traffic is only sent to the PEs that are actively requesting it. This comes at the expense of more signaling. Each particular flow is mapped to a tunnel of its own that needs to be signaled independently. From a design perspective, you can use both types of tunnels in a balanced way. Let's see how selective tunnels are actually signaled. When PE1 receives the first source tree join for a particular C multicast flow, it advertises a selective PMSI auto-discovery BGP route. With this route, PE1 announces to the world that it is the head end of a P-tunnel that will be dedicated exclusively to the transport of this CS, CG flow. All the downstream PEs interested in becoming leaves of this P-tunnel should notify PE1. PE3 and PE4 have downstream receivers for this C-S, C-G flow, so each of them sends a leaf auto discovery BGP route targeted to PE1. The key here is that the route sent by PE3 is different from the one sent by PE4. Since the routes are different, the route reflector does not perform any path selection. Both routes are reflected to PE1 where they are imported in VRF1. Let's see the details of that route exchange. These are multicast VPN routes, so they are encoded in AFI1, SAFI5. The selective PMSI auto discovery route has type 3. This route carries the full mesh route target, so it is imported by all the remote PEs in the multicast VPN. The route also has a PMSI attribute with a new alpha number. This alpha number will be included in the RSVP path messages of the new p-tunnel that is about to be signaled. How about the leaf auto discovery route? It has route type 4 and two components. First, the route key is simply the original selective PMSI auto discovery route that PE1 sent in the first place. PE3 basically tells PE1, here goes my reply to this route of yours. The other critical component of the leaf auto discovery route is the originating router. In this case, the router ID of PE3. In this way, PE3 is identifying itself as being interested in becoming a leaf of this selective p-tunnel. So leaf auto discovery routes are much more personal than the anonymous source tree join routes. The route target is built in such a way that this leaf auto discovery route will be only imported by PE1. Why is it followed by value zero instead of an identifier of VRF1? Well, the route key contains enough information for PE1 to know that this is about VRF1. Thanks a lot for following this workshop till the end. Very well done. Please share your feedback on JNet. Goodbye.